This lady here has followed a plant-based diet for over 36 years. She is a culinary instructor, professional speaker, and author, and otherwise crazy food maniac. With her comedy background, she has made appearances on The Tonight Show, David Letterman, and more. Her book, Unprocessed, how to achieve vibrant health and your ideal weight is half confessional memoir. All the juicy details are in here, right And half delectable recipes, true story. Many of her recipes can be seen on her YouTube cooking show, The Chef and the Dietitian, and she also lays claim to the fact that her cholesterol is lower than her... No, my IQ is higher than my cholesterol, not my cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> She stole my punchline. That wasn't very nice. Okay, and on to my other buddy over here, JP. Come on up, JP. This is renowned nutrition and fitness expert, my partner in plant based fitness crime, John Pierre. He trains a wide range of clientele, including Hollywood celebrities, rock stars, and Fortune 500 executives. But he would just want you to know that he's a guy that cares about you very much as well as military personnel, hardcore athletes, and people of all backgrounds and fitness levels. He published The Pillars of Health. This is new. Check it out. Check it out. Which discusses the four solid principles that provide everyone with a strong foundation for lasting lifelong well-being. Please welcome my friends Jeff AJ and John Pierre. Thank you. So, JP and I have worked together for a while. It's almost like we're an old married couple because he doesn't get sex either. <laughs> Being married to AJ requires lots of therapy. <laughs> so today's topic is how to satisfy your sweet tooth without using sugar. Because Americans eat over 150 pounds of sugar per person per year. Me and JP don't eat any, so a few of you out there we know are eating at least 800 pounds. <laughs> you know who you are, and I can usually spot you too. I'll, I'll figure it out by the end of the day. You're allowed to say stuff, you know. First time ever. <laughs> the only reason she's kind of quiet is I forced her to take her meds today. <laughs> yeah? Okay. <laughs> Just remember, JP one V zero people won't get to. <laughs> anyway, it's so cool we have a hearing um, impaired person here and an interpreter, because I actually used to have a deaf boyfriend, I'm being serious, and I used to sign. Can you hear it when it's down this low high? Not very well. Uh, sorry. I wish they had people like to help you and put this on, because I'm not good at like technical stuff. Is there anybody here that can help me? <laughs> So anyway, like any other language, if you don't practice it, you forget it. Like I forgot my high school French and like college Spanish. But I do remember how to swear in sign language. <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> She's saying shame on you. Sorry. Oh my gosh, is Dr. Wait a second, is Dr. Hans Steel here? Because if so, I am Oh no. Yes, he is. Oh boy. So much for me ever working in an Adventist church again. Oh gosh. Oh boy. Why didn't somebody warn me? All right. Just so AJ doesn't have a filter. It's not my fault. I was it's a rare genetic condition. I was born this way. It is not my fault. So seriously, what we want to do is, a lot of you are here for the food and that's fine, so just so you know, if you try to check out early, you ain't getting any because the food is going to be served the last five minutes. And what's interesting about this demo is you're going to get all three samples. We were only required to do one, but you're getting all three of these delicious samples. So first one I want to make right away so that they can plate it. What we're doing is we're making a delicious quinoa salad. The recipe is in my book, and we'll send out a, a sign of sheet. If you want to be a cheap ass and not buy it, I'll still send you the recipe. <laughs> I actually only have 10 books left, but what I do want to tell you, especially if you missed yesterday when we had the mushroom chili made in the pressure cooker. We both love this machine. It's called an electric pressure cooker. This is the brand we both have. It's called an Instant Pot. And what we love about the Instant Pot is it has a stainless steel insert. Many of the pressure cookers have a non-stick, which is fine, but some people are not comfortable with it. This is really the only
only part you have to wash. It washes very easily. It's dishwasher safe. You don't put the electric part in the water. And the top part, all you do is take this ring out if it's dirty. Really, if you can use an iPhone, you can use a pressure cooker. All you do is push a button. There's a lot of buttons here. I have no idea what they mean because I never read the book. But all you have to do, for example, we're using quinoa today. It's a double recipe. So it's two pounds of quinoa, which I cooked in the pressure cooker and I chilled overnight. Guess how many minutes it took to make the quinoa in the pressure cooker? One. Seven. One. <laughs> One minute. So there's nothing in here, so I'm not going to have it really. Oh, one of the things, this is the pressure release valve. It has to go in the middle. Okay, watch. I just it. There we go. There we go. And then when you release it, it, you just turn it. But basically, you put your stuff in. If you start with hot liquids like boiling water, it will go faster. If you start with room temperature or cold water, it will go a little bit slower. But basically, what you do is you put your stuff in, you get the top on. And then all I do is I use this one button called manual. I don't pay attention to anything else. Just pay no attention to these other buttons. It'll just mess it up. You press manual. There's a plus and a minus. If I want to add time, I do plus. So what I do for the quinoa, I actually usually do two minutes, even though one minute would have been enough. Two minutes. Pretend there's quinoa and water here. It's going to take a second, then it's going to beep. Okay, so there we go. So then it, it's on, and then it will be ready in two minutes. Now, obviously, I'm going to turn it off because there's nothing in it. But what's great about the electric pressure cooker versus the stovetop model is that you can set it and forget it. So when I come home from work, I put my dinner in, usually a soup, a stew, or chili. I take a bath. I walk my dog. I don't have to worry about anything because it shuts itself off to the warming setting. So this will change your life. I've been vegan for 36 years. You've been vegan for 30. 30 years, 76 of veganism between us. And it's changed our lives because people say you can't eat a healthy diet because you don't have enough time or not have enough money. When you use whole foods, like fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes, I was on that show Vegan Mashup starring Miyoko Shinner, and we made a split pea soup in the pressure cooker that served eight people for under $4. That's 50 cents a serving. So when you're using whole food, it's practically free. It's when you buy designer vegan junk food in packages that it's expensive. So, you know, you can get a 20 pound bag of potatoes at a store called Smart and Final in Los Angeles for $4.99. So it's not expensive. And the thing is with the pressure cooker, you save time because you throw everything in and everything's ready in about 10 minutes. Beans in seven minutes, you'll cut oats in five. So this will change your life. So we cooked the quinoa last night. We put it in a bowl, we chilled it. We used the tricolor quinoa organic from Trader Joe's. And now we're just going to add stuff to it. So this is really a delicious salad because of what we're adding to it. So we've got some currants. That's where our sweetness is going to come for. Currants are sort of like baby raisins. They taste, I think, a little bit sweeter than raisins. And they're smaller, so they disperse better. I'm using four cups because this is a double recipe. You could really use any dried fruit in here. You could use raisins or cherries or goji berries, cranberries. Just make sure when you buy your fruit dried, it's sulfide free. That's my preference, especially if you're somebody prone to asthma or migraines. It's salt free, it's sugar free, and oil free. Kind of defeats the purpose. And or well, organic whenever possible, absolutely. Yeah, and, and remember that grapes are one of the highest grade crops in the world. So you definitely want to buy raisins that are organic, even if they cost a little bit more. Because they're extremely highly sprayed. And when you look at all the neurological problems that people are having today and infertility, these pesticides are what's causing a good portion of that damage. So spend the extra couple dollars right. to get the organic. And we are big believers in non-GMO and organic, but that said, we would eat inorganic produce over mm -hmm. organic animal products any sure. day of the week. Yeah. So that's just- and, other, and also remember with the raisins, it's a good source of iron for us. So it is one of our better sources of iron. And if you came to AJ's class yesterday talking about beans, one of the key things about legumes and even something like you know, quinoa is we're looking for a particular amino acid called lysine. It's a limiting amino acid often in our diet that beans need to make sure they get enough of. So that's why we're really big in the quinoa and especially uh, beans to get to your diet. And quinoa is really high in protein. Not that we have to worry about that on a plant-based diet. For those that are, it's one of the higher sources in the plant-based world. So to that, I'm going to add some pomegranate seeds. This makes the salad so good that if they're out of season, buy them when they're in season and freeze them just so you can make the salad. Are they fresh or dried? These are fresh. 
I get them in Trader Joe's already out of the pomegranate. You can't take them out of the pomegranate. Dr. Deal's wife, Lily, does a beautiful job doing that, but for me, it's a little bit too labor intensive. Why are these so They good? make them frozen also. They Costco, do. Costco carries them frozen. And remember, one of the most important studies that came out of Israel was on pomegranate juice in terms of reversing heart disease. So we know that it's one of the best uh, fruits that you can get into your diet along with berries. But if you are going to drink any juice, normally I don't have my clients drink any juice at all. But if they're going to drink the juice, it would either be pure blueberry, pure cranberry, not cranberry flavor, but pure cranberry, or pure pomegranate juice. We're adding some nuts because Brenda Davis said that women who live, eat nuts live a year longer. So. Men who eat them get to live three years longer. I don't think that's fair, but we're still going to do it. One of the reasons also we have nuts there, our nuts are a good source of arginine, and arginine does form, help form nitric oxide, which is basically a vasodilator, opens up the arteries. It works very similar to Viagra. Cool. <laughs> and what's Viagra for specifically? What part of the body does Viagra target? <laughs> well, you tell me you're the one that brought a vibrator. <laughs> 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 this relationship is slowly fading away. But let me tell you, the greatest man in the world actually is her husband. Yeah, that's she true. puts up with this. St. Charles. St. <laughs> Charles. I just, that's amazing that somebody married me, isn't it? Yes. Anyway, we're using yeah. pistachios because I love them. They're my favorite nut. I think it's, they're an underused nut. And really, one of the reasons I'm using this is because it's green. When I developed this salad about three years ago, I was asked by Whole Foods to do a Christmas class. I'm a Jewish person. I'm like, well, I don't know what to do. So I figured red and green. Pomegranates, <laughs> seeds are red. Pistachios are green. I'll figure something out. <laughs> but they are really a delicious nut. And of course, we always believe in using raw nuts and unsalted because we're SOS free, which stands for sugar free, oil free, and salt free. And if there's time to talk about the science of why. We will explain specifically today we're not focusing on why sugar is such a destructive force. I don't know if you read the article, National Geographic, their July issue had a cupcake on the cover, which was interesting, because usually National Geographic has like a cheetah or an elephant on the cover. <laughs> but this, I, I saw it when I was in, actually in Portland Airport on my way to teach in Alaska, and who thought there are 63 vegans in Alaska? I, said, I, <laughs> I am not kidding. They, and I saw it on Facebook, they had a veg society, there's 63 of them. I came up, I taught a class, I spoke, but I bought this because of the cupcake. And in the article, it was so interesting because the doctor said that so many diseases are linked to sugar, not, not, not just tooth decay, obviously, but heart disease, autoimmune disease, uh, the type 2 diabetes, certain cancers. And the doctor that was writing the article said that in his 40 years of practice as a medical doctor, every disease he's treated, all roads, leads to sugar. Wow. So, you know, don't take it lightly. I was a real sugar addict. The story's in my book, and I developed the beginning of colon cancer, even being a vegan, because all I ate was sugar. And now, all I eat is the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit. So, what <laughs> <you> got. <laughs> and just remember quickly with sugar, you know, I was in Washington, D.C., lecturing at the Capitol for 175 congressional people. And one of the things that I was talking about is the challenges we're seeing with kids today with attention deficit, hyperactivity, and extreme violence. The more sugar you eat, the more B vitamins that you lose in your diet, chromium, magnesium. And those B vitamins are critical for normal brain functioning and neurological functioning. Most children are already deficient in B vitamins because they're not eating enough whole grains or legumes. And then all of a sudden you feed them all the sugar, a can of soda pop could have nine teaspoons of sugar. Then they have literally no B vitamins in their system. They're in a deficit. So is it any wonder that their brains aren't functioning normally or their metabolism doesn't work normally? So we need to be really cautious with sugar. If you want to eat sugar cane, honestly, we recommend go ahead and eat sugar yeah. cane. Go to Cuba, cut a little piece, yes. and then enjoy it. It would literally take you hours to, to chew through all that fiber and all the minerals in there would be great for you. But it's when you refine it, just like you take an olive and you press it, and all you get is the fat, and you leave everything else behind. That's the challenge. The problem always comes in the refining. That's why my book is called Unprocessed. When you think about it, there's nothing wrong with eating whole grains. The problem is when you process them into flowers, particularly white flowers, which are stripped of most of the fiber and nutrients. I mean, if you, if you go in nature and find a flower called the white poppy, there's no problem. But then you refine it into cocaine and heroin, and that's a problem. <laughs> but I'm, not, I'm being funny, but think about it. There's nothing wrong with eating beans. You refine it into sugar, that's the problem. There's nothing wrong with eating corn, but you refine it into corn oil. That's where the problem comes. It takes about 16 years of corn to make one tablespoon of corn oil. It takes 41 olives to make a tablespoon of olive oil. You would never eat that much of the whole food. So you, we're designed to eat our food whole and not eat our food processed.
So the, uh, the other ingredient are fresh herbs. Because we don't eat salt, it doesn't mean our food lacks flavor. Actually, our food has a lot of flavor. So this is almost two pounds of fresh herbs, but I cut them up very finely using this machine called a food processor, fitted with the S blade, which you can get for as inexpensive as $40, a good brand like Hamilton Beach or Black and Water. And I have my three favorite herbs, fresh mint, scallions, and Italian parsley. And I'm adding this to the mix. You remember, ounce per ounce, next to essential oils, herbs have the highest antioxidant qualities. So I have a whole section in my book. My specialty is actually in enhancing cognitive functioning in seniors. And I talk exclusively about these essential oils and herbs, how they actually help preserve the tissue, particularly the brain. So you definitely want to be using as much herbs as you can handle in your diet. The last ingredient is lime juice. This is a bottle, but this is fresh. I just, I believe in reusing bottles. This is two cups of fresh squeezed lime juice. And that's it for the dressing. And I make this all the time for regular people, you know, non-vegans. And they say, what's the dressing? Well, the dressing is lime juice. Limes are very sweet. And they make an excellent dressing. And you can also use lemon or orange. But I just love limes. So I'm going to glove up right now. See if you can press the, the lemons yourself. Because all that white portion of the citrus is bioflavonoids. And that's a very important component, especially for your capillaries. So it's far better to, to just press them yourself than it would be to buy just clear lemon juice. If you buy lemon juice, make sure it has it's cloudy, because then you get some of those bioflavonoids in there. But when we combine the lemon with the raisins, again, a source of iron with vitamin C that enhances the absorption. So that's one of the reasons why we have this recipe in, in this order like this. If you're using fresh and they're organic, we also recommend you use the outside the zest, because that adds a lot of flavor. One of the ways to get people to either get off salt or reduce their intake of salt is to give them something sour. Because we have taste buds on our tongue for sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. And when you have the taste buds for sour sitting right next to the taste buds for salt, you can often trick them thinking you had something salty when you didn't by using sour. So the lime zest, the lemon zest, things like apple cider vinegar or unsweetened rice vinegar, these are great things to use to bump up the flavor of your food without using salt. Did anybody taste the chili yesterday? Yep. Did that need salt? It had no salt. Yeah, yeah. you know, you can have flavor without salt. Salt is just one of those other things that are addictive, just like sugar and fat. You know, we recommend two books. One is called Salt, Sugar, and Fat, How the Food Giants Hooked Us by Michael Moss. Came out February 26th. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning author. And a similar book that came out in 2009 by the former head of the FDA, Dr. David Kessler, was called The End of Overeating. Basically, both foods basically tell you that the processed food industry knowingly created a product that was addictive. That after World War II, when the country became more affluent and women started going back to work, things like Betty Crocker and Swanson's TV dinner were born. And these were to save women time so they'd have more time to do other things than spend in the kitchen. The people that manufactured these products had no idea that Americans would start using these products every single meal, every single day, every single week for the rest of their lives. They thought they would be special treats not something that would be our standard fare. But if you read these books, what you'll understand is that when the processed food industry became an empire, and again, listen to the fact that I'm using the word industry, because there's an olive oil industry, and a pharmaceutical industry, and a meat industry, and a dairy industry. There's not a quinoa industry, not a kale <laughs> industry. They are there to make money, to profit. They're not there for your health. But when the processed food industry really became an empire, they took the very best doctors and brain scientists at the time behind closed doors to figure out the exact combination of sugar, fat, and salt, which is what I call the evil trinity, to addict the average person's brain chemistry to their product. So when you see commercials on television that say, bet you can't eat just one for Lay's potato chips, 90% of the population can't because sugar is addictive, and that's all sugar. It doesn't matter if you call it honey, or maple syrup, <coughs> or agave, which is actually the worst, or brown rice syrup, or barley malt, or whatever other kind of crap sugars are out there. <laughs> yeah, fried fructose, fried fructose corn syrup. It doesn't matter if you call it Himalayan sea salt, blessed by Pope, or black salt, or truffle salt. All sugar is addictive, all salt is addictive, and all fat is addictive. Yes, extra virgin, yes. What about molasses? Still sugar, okay. still a processed sugar. And then the thing with sugar is, is if you look at what our government, the American Heart Association, American what about Can Steve? Huh? What about Steve? Okay, um, you're interrupting me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to answer Steve.
give you up in one second. I'm going to answer that in one second. But, but here's the thing. The recommendation from our government is the amount more than the type. So we feel that high fructose corn syrup and agave are probably the worst because they're metabolized in the liver. High fructose corn syrup is 55% fructose. Agave is often 90% fructose. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind too, we're, we're working with addicts all the time, AJ and I. So we, we are working with people that if they get just a little sampling of sugar or salt or oil, it's going to call their name. So that's why we're so adamant. It's like if you're working with alcoholics, you don't say, well, you could have a tablespoon of vodka a day, right? You have to stay away from it. Maybe some people can handle a little sugar and it doesn't bother them, but we're working with addicts. Right. The, the other thing is, is the question I would ask is, what are you putting the sugar on? Because if you're putting it on kale, maybe I would say, okay, but most people are looking for sugar as an excuse to eat things that are otherwise unhealthy, like to drink coffee, like to make desserts with oil and white flour, that kind of thing. So the thing is, the recommendation is, first of all, that nobody needs to have any processed sweeteners a day. It's not like a minimum daily requirement. Just like with saturated fat, we don't need any, and our government says if we're going to have it, we should have no more than 14% of our calories from saturated fat, which ironically is the amount in one tablespoon of olive oil. So the recommendation from our government is that we have no more than 5% of our total calories a day from processed sugar. So from a person eating 2,000 calories a day, that would be 90 calories. Now, I've, I went to Loma Linda University. They had a machine that tested how many calories I could eat a day in the absence of exercise to either gain or lose weight, and it's less than 1,500. So, so that's a lot less. So a lot of people can't be eating 2,000 calories a day. That's too much. So if, let's say 2,000 in the average. That's 100 calories from sugar. That's five teaspoons. If you're drinking one soda, you're already over the limit. If you're eating one dessert, the standard dessert, I was a pastry chef for four years, never used sugar. A standard dessert starts with two cups of sugar, one cup of some kind of oil, three cups of flour, you're already over your limit. So, you know, you know, you could argue that molasses ostensibly is a little bit healthier than maple syrup, but then we could also argue that snorting cocaine is healthier than injecting it. But just because something is less just because something is less bad doesn't mean it's healthy. And people want, always want to argue that their coconut nectar or their sugar is healthier, when in reality you really don't need it. And once you stop eating sugar and stop eating oil and stop eating salt, Whole food tastes really good. It really just perpetuates you. Another question? Oh, yeah, I haven't even answered the speaking question. That's all right. Well, and also remember that these artificial sweeteners are actually even worse, if you can imagine that. I mean, you take something like NutraSweet, which is like 50% of it is l phenylalanine which is an excitatory amino acid, and 40% is aspartic acid, and there's 10% methanol esters, which in your body gets converted to methanol, which is a deadly poison, that actually the symptoms of methanol poisoning are the same things as MS. So these artificial sweeteners are horrific from a health standpoint, but the studies have also shown people who use artificial sweeteners actually end up craving more sugar mm -hmm. in the long run. And that's the challenge with when we're working with addicts. If we give them any sweetener at all, it calls their name. They just want more and more and more. So, you know, the program that we do is really, you know, serious we, business. We do a program in LA we've run for five years called the Unprocessed 30 Day Challenge where people come to our home for a period of 30 days once a week for dinner for about five hours for education, for fitness instruction, for cooking instruction. We're on the phone with them every week and email. We put the program on DVD. It's going to be available next month. And if you want to sign up for our mailing list, we'll tell you when it comes out and we'll send you recipes and all that kind of stuff. But um, let me answer the stevia question and I'll get back to you. So stevia is a leaf that's found in nature. And I don't have a problem if people want to use the green leaf. But then what happens is people are concentrating this into liquids and potions with chocolate flavor and all this stuff. And again, it's a highly processed food. And we have people in the program that walk around with these little bottles of stevia and can't even drink a glass of water without a drop of full. Dr. Furman says that the problem with stevia is that for most people, it perpetuates your desire for more sweet. And if you're an addict, why would you want to do that? The idea is just to get off it, let the natural food taste good. You know, once you stop eating processed sugar, a mango is like orgasmic. I mean, fruit is amazing. But see, see, I was a sugar addict for 43 years, and I would never eat this. And now I'm like, this is really sweet. This is very, very enjoyable. So if you're going to use stevia, I mean, sometimes you're a diabetic, that's all you can use. I would recommend using the leaf. You can buy the seeds. You can grow it on your windowsill. You can buy whole leaf stevia. But I wouldn't use the processed powders or liquids. I think they're, first of all, I also think from a culinary standpoint, they're the most vile thing I've ever tasted is stevia. What were the other dry herbs that you put in besides Oh, they weren't dry herbs. Oh, I mean, uh, they were fresh herbs. Fresh herbs besides mint? I put mint, Italian parsley, and scallions. <laughs>
Now, just quickly, one of the things when I'm working with athletes that I have them do to sweeten the beverage, actually, is I'll have them take a just a bowl, it could be any bowl like this, and they'll put dried fruit in here. So maybe they'll put in dried mangoes or even prunes, and then have them fill it up with water, and then I'll let them soak overnight for 24 hours, and then in the morning, they use that sweetener, that's a liquid, that's liquid that's like mango nectar, and they just put it in their water bottle, they put water in it, and then they put that mango nectar in there, and that's how they make their own natural sports drink, because there's a little sweetener in there. When I'm working with athletes, I definitely want them to use a carbohydrate, uh, but, you know, so I, that's the type of sugar, if you want to say, they use as a fruit. All right, so the next recipe is dessert called apple pie heart. It's also in my book, and it's on, both of these recipes are actually also on the website. So again, we're using nuts, and people always tell me I'm bashing, I'm bashing nuts. I, I don't personally eat nuts anymore, and if you want to know why, you can just look at this picture, because not eating nuts, I was able to lose 55 pounds. I was already a vegan, but I just, I'm an addict, and nuts are not something that I can eat just a pound for a day. Seeds I don't have a problem with. I mean, I've never overeaten on flax seeds. It never happened. You know? <laughs> and it's the same thing with chia seeds. And you know, Dr. Greger has told me that, nut, that seeds are actually healthier than nuts, and all you need is about one to two tablespoons a day of flax seeds or chia seeds to get your essential omega-3 fatty acids. And chia seeds are amazing because you can make unbelievable puddings that taste like dessert. There's a lady in there selling a chia cereal. It's fantastic because when liquid hits chia seeds, they swell up. And, they, um, and, they're like, okay. and you don't need sugar because you can put fruit in there, like blueberries or bananas. So Just make sure on the flaxseed that you grind the flaxseed. Right. So it's really it has important. to be ground based and You can and buy. What I do is I just buy a couple pounds at a time, and then I just put it in the blender, and I just blend it, and then I just store it in the refrigerator or freezer. So it'll just be looking yeah. like ground up nuts, and then you can put in your oatmeal or whatever. When they're whole, you can actually not keep them in the freezer, but once you grind them, they have to be right. right. Yeah, you don't want to ever buy like ground flaxseed at the store because it often gets rancid. Yeah. So we have three cups of nuts. I'm using one cup of walnuts, one cup of pecans, one cup of almonds. And the only reason I'm using three different nuts is when I developed this recipe, I didn't have enough of any one kind of nut. And it tasted good, so it's fine. And uh, always, uh, we always prefer raw. We always prefer unsalted. And make sure to keep the nuts refrigerated again or frozen. Especially if they're broken in pieces, they will oxidize faster. So you want to be careful. The other thing is, we, what I definitely suggest is you get Brazil nuts in your diet. Because they're about our only good source of selenium, which is a really important antioxidant for us. Um, and then the other thing is make sure we don't really have any clients ever eating nuts. So we don't really allow our clients to eat nuts, but they can use them in recipes. Mm -hmm. Okay, because once you start opening and you start eating nuts like this, it's, it's a non-stop type of thing, so you have to be really cautious. Anytime, and see that's the other thing, and I don't know if I'll share with you, because I'm doing a lot of work with food addiction in the outside of the making world, and anytime you have a hand-to-mouth food, that's not a good food, that's not a good thing to do if you're an emotional eater or a binger. I don't know if you know that, you well, probably do. Yeah. That's why you tell people to use chopsticks. Yeah. So even things that are ostensibly, <laughs> no seriously, even things that are ostensibly healthy and not harmful, like like air pop popcorn. You, I mean, when I used to eat it, I would just be shoveling it in like this. Oh my God. And then, yeah, you tell me about yeah, So we, we went traveling, uh, uh, unfortunately, together. <laughs> and uh, so we're on the plane, and AJ brings literally like a Santa Claus sack of popcorn, because she's, she doesn't like flying, so she yeah. was shoveling it in yeah. so fast. And then when we got uh, out of the air, airplane into the airport, I lost San her. San Francisco. I, I couldn't yeah. find her. And literally, I'm not exaggerating, I just followed the colonel's <laughs> 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 And there she was, eating her popcorn. Just like Hansel and Gretel. But now what he does is he has me eat it with a with chopsticks. Yeah. And it slows me a lot, it slows me down. We can talk, if there's time, we can talk a lot about travel because we both travel full time. And I never go anywhere without like most of the food on the plane. <laughs> but remember, don't be scared of nuts. We just want raw nuts that aren't roasted or salted. We want them refrigerated or frozen to stay fresh. Brenda Davis is in the house, and we've been talking about her all day. And we only want them used in recipes. We don't want to be eating them, especially if you have you know addiction issues, because you won't stop. And by the way, nuts need to be thoroughly chewed to a cream consistency, and that's why when we put them in a recipe, it breaks it up so you can absorb more of the minerals that way. If you rely on just on your teeth, and most people have poor hydrochloric acid or digestive enzymes, especially elderly people, those nuts literally will pass through those chunks. So you're missing out on all those nutrients. But when we blend them, we're opening up that surface area, and so we're getting better absorption. Yeah, the last thing we want to see when you're pooping the next day is like a walnut still in shell. Because if it's there, you know you have not chewed it properly. <laughs> Um, um, um. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Do you guys soak 
soak your nuts before you do anything? Or what? I always soak his nuts. Trust me. Before we do it, we all no, um, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, so, you know and, and it's fine if you want to soak them, it's just that we just don't, most of our clients and stuff, they don't want to make the time to do it, but it would be in theory better to do it, and then making sure you rinse off the water. But we don't in these recipes, no. Okay, I, I, I know how to soak nuts, and often what I'll do is if I do soak nuts is I'll put them in the dehydrator because you can't, for these, at least this recipe, they can't be wet. They have to be dry for, for this to work, but okay. yeah. Can you tell us why soaking the nuts is good? Yeah, it just gets rid of some of the enzyme inhibitors and makes it a little easier okay. to digest. Is that why you dump the water? Yeah, it's vile. Exactly. It's, it's yes. very it's vile. You don't want to dump your soap water for, for fruit. That's delicious. But soap yeah. water from nuts, it's brown and it's, it's nasty. But we're not we're not recommending very you know large amounts of nuts to our clients. So like an ounce a day. So it depends. How many? An ounce a day? Well, yeah, it even depends on if somebody has depends. diabetes or heart disease yeah. or what. But yeah. And again, it can be done with seeds, and that's really what we use because we work a lot with food addicts and nuts and food addiction on that. But we still want you to get them in because it's really in the vegan diet. It's one of our best sources of vitamin E next to avocados. So we definitely want you to get nuts in your diet for sure. So I'm using this food processor fitted with the S plate, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind these nuts into a flour. I don't want to let it go past the flour stage or it will turn into a nut butter, which would be good for nuts. tablespoon of cinnamon and a quarter to one half a teaspoon of nutmeg that I pre-measured out. And again, these are very potent antioxidants, so you definitely want to be including them in your diet. Cinnamon I use quite a bit in the geriatric community. It enhances memory, and it's a very stimulating herb. It's a very warm or young herb. So I definitely use it. I have, again, a whole section of my book on using cinnamon and, and different herbs. Are you grinding your own? Oh, this is already ground. Okay, but you've ground your own before. Cinnamon? Yeah. I haven't. I've, I've grated my own nutmeg, but I've never ground my own okay. cinnamon. Okay. Yeah. Actually, what I actually prefer to use in this recipe, and the next one is something called apple pie spice. You can get it at Kroger, which means you might be able to get it at Fred Meyer. And apple pie spice is a, a, a mixture of cinnamon, nutmeg, and mace, and it tastes like apple pie. Now, apple pie spice is very, very important for the senior community because if you let a senior who's starting to lose their cognitive ability smell apple, any sort of apple spice, and most seniors can tell you that their mom made them apple pie when they were a kid. So when I'm working with seniors, if you get them in that mode and you have them smell this particular scent, it's anchored in the brain 70 years ago, and they'll start telling you about the pie that their mother made, and then you start talking to them, well, what did she wear? Oh, she always wore this beautiful elf apron with a rose. And then you're literally taking them back cognitively 70 years ago and stimulating their brain. So that's why these, these scents are they're miraculous. They really are. Remember, when they were breaking into tombs a long time ago, they weren't always stealing the gold. Oftentimes, they were stealing the essential oils because that's how they're antibiotic, they're antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. They're very, very potent. So then I'm going to add two kinds of dried fruit. This food processor is a little smaller than the one I'm used to, so I'm going to have to do half at a time to get it to work. So one is dried apple rings. Now okay. dried apples are actually one of the highest sources of antioxidants, again, particularly in the peel. And apples are known to have quercetin, which is a flavonoid that's been written up in the Journal of Allergy and Asthma. It's wonderful for allergies. Many people take quercetin as an anti-inflammatory agent. They'll take it with a, a substance called bromelain, which is from the stem of the pineapple. So it's a, a very potent antioxidant.
Alcohol-free vanilla often has sugar, which is something I don't recommend and where I work for many months out of the year, True North Health in Santa Rosa. Dr. Goldhammer doesn't allow anything with any sugar, any oil, or any salt. So I couldn't use the alcohol vanilla because that had alcohol, and I don't really care for the taste of that anyway in people that are suffering with the addiction of alcoholism can't have extract with alcohol. So I just started making my own. It ended up turning out to be cheaper, and it tastes way better. It's actually vanilla water. And it's not my recipe, it's from the Cafe Gratitude cookbook called Sweet Gratitude. You take three vanilla beans, whole vanilla beans, not just the seeds, break them up, put them in your blender with one cup of water, blend it very well, and then just keep it in a glass jar in your fridge. It will last several weeks. It is the best tasting vanilla. If you just use one vanilla bean per recipe, you're going to go broke. It's very expensive, second most expensive spice in the world, second only to yeah. right. And you can get much cheaper vanilla beans online in places like UNFI and Frontier. You can get them as low as a dollar a piece. If you walk into a store like Whole Foods, one vanilla bean can end up costing you about six dollars. So what I do is I'm going to use something called a silicone mold. I have heart-shaped molds because I think they're cute. I got these at Target, three for a dollar. And you can get these all over the place, Bed Bath & Beyond, all different kinds of shapes for different holidays. You can get them online. So I like to push it in a little area there. And I just press it in and see how cute it is. Now, it's easier if you stick them in the freezer or the refrigerator. It should come out, but sometimes it doesn't come out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it is perfect. These molds are really good, especially if you have children, because here's the secret with kids. They will be more inclined to eat a food if they help make it. Mm -hmm. This is a simple recipe, because once you as the parent or grandparent make it, you just let them put it in the mold themselves. So they're more inclined, especially if they're looking like little cartoon characters or heart shapes or something. Kids like that. And what's nice about these is you can just make these and store these. What I do is I get a lot of glass containers. These are um, from a company called TriBest. So every time I'm making stuff, I put it in the refrigerator in the glass container so I can see it. Because if you get home late at night, how many people here, they just didn't feel like cooking, they had a bowl of cereal? Have we all done that? Yeah, so if you just have all your vegetables cut up and you have your little snacks made in here, as soon as you open the refrigerator, it's very, it's very motivating to see this is all done for me. It's pre-made. So I have my clients pre-make food every Sunday. So they will basically just spend you know, a couple hours pre-making all their food. They'll freeze some of it so it's like an instant TV dinner, and then the rest of the stuff they'll cut up. But these are ones that are really important to pre-make, which are good snacks. Now, if you absolutely have to have cereal for dinner, we don't mind. It's this cereal, right? Mm -hmm. This is also a great travel snack. This is our overnight muesli. So I travel all the time, and I don't worry about getting healthy food anywhere because I always have my food with me. What is that? This is overnight. Well, what, what is this? Is This is one serving of what I call overnight muesli. In the bag, I have one half cup of gluten-free oats, pre-measured everything in this bag. I have two tablespoons of currants, half a teaspoon of this apple pie spice, but of course you could use cinnamon, and one tablespoon of chia seeds. I'm using chia seeds not just because they're so high in omega-3 fatty acids, but because in this recipe, I want the ability of the chia seed to expand when it hits the liquid and create a pudding-like texture. These are raw oats. I do not cook this when I get to my hotel room at night. I just, I can travel with a little bowl. I, this is, I will travel with this bowl, but I can travel with <laughs> You know, sometimes I use the ice bucket that comes with it just to mix it. Or, or even if I have to, I'll use this bag. But I put it here. And then I travel with this really horrible cheap grater that I got at the 99 cent store or a little knife and I either buy organic apples at the airport or I tra take them with me and I'm going to grate this apple over it. If I wanted to, I could use a pear. If I didn't want to travel with a grater, I could just bring a small paring knife in my suitcase. TSA will not take this away, but I put this in my suitcase anyway. This is actually one of the most filling meals because you're dealing with apple pectin in here, one of the best fibers for feeling full. The oats have beta-glucan in, which is an incredible fiber, just like barley, that would reduce cholesterol and blood sugar very, very well. It's, it's really one of the most filling things that you could eat, and it's so healthy for you. What's great is this one half cup of oats, which is the serving size of oats, by the time I'm done, it's going to make a two-cup portion of food. And you know, in order to not be hungry, we have to satisfy three things. We have to hit our stretch receptors, our nutrient receptors, and our calorie receptors. And that's one of the things that we don't like about oil, because 
you, you never are going to be satisfied. It bypasses the normal mechanisms of satiation because it doesn't hit the stress receptors, and because it has no nutrients, it never hits the nutrient receptors. Same thing with processed sugar, but whole food, whole fruit will do that. So one half cup of oats becomes a two cup meal. So it's very filling and satisfying. My husband eats this every single day for breakfast. I've been away five days, so I made a whole week's worth, and I put each two cup serving in a glass jar. So when he wakes up in the morning, he likes his heated, so he microwaves it. Some people prefer it cold, some people prefer it at room temperature. But what's even better than this is two ways I'm gonna tell you how to also eat it, and you're gonna actually enjoy it one of these two ways. So I did a presentation at one of our largest medical centers, Forest Memorial Hospital, and I had to make 400 servings of this. That's a lot. So I used a food processor with the, with the shredding blade to grate 400 apples. This is a lot of use I've never made. I've never done 1,600 samples before. So the person, oh yeah, sorry. Why are you grading it? Well, um, as opposed to leaving it whole? Yeah. Or if I just throw a whole apple in there, <laughs> it would be a little weird. The other thing is by grating it, you, 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 you basically make it sweeter yeah. than eating just a chunk. It's just like when you grate carrots, it'll make the salad sweeter. It just, I think it gets incorporated better grating it than just cutting it. It brings the moisture up in there yeah. too. Because once that chia seed hits water, it expands. It's like psyllium seed. Have you ever heard of psyllium seed, that new salt, something like that? That once it hits water, it expands in your intestinal tract. For a BM in the AM, take Metamucil in the PM. Have <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard that? <laughs> All right. Okay. So now here's my liquid. Now, if I'm traveling at a hotel, I can either buy those very small boxes of non-dairy unsweetened milk at the store. I could use either uh, unsweetened apple juice, I can use plant milk, or I could just use water, which is available in my hotel room. I measured this out in advance, and I put in uh, one half teaspoon of my alcohol-free vanilla, and then I'm going to add the liquid. This is the easiest recipe in the world to make. See that? So you just mix. Now, right now the liquid is still there. It's not going to get absorbed right away, and that's why I call it overnight usually, because I'm going to put it in the refrigerator overnight, and then the next day the texture is like a cooked pudding. And then the oats actually get a cooked texture, they get very soft. If you're in a hurry, you can eat this right now. There's nothing wrong with eating it this way, it's just going to be a little bit chewier. It's, the taste will be absolutely the same. You'll eat less of it if it's at this state, because it's very chewy. Does anybody want to eat this? I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. Mm -hmm. Who was that first hand that went off? Well, I'll eat it. Uh -oh. You were literally the first person that raised your hand. The other thing that I do is I travel, this is a portable blender, it's from a company called Tribex, so I travel with this. And what I do is I actually take little packets of almond butter that are sealed, right? And I just you just squeeze it in here and you add water and you just put it on for a couple seconds and then you make almond milk right there. He, he's actually gonna share with a few people that wanted to taste it because you're tasting it in a different way. You can eat this, you can heat it, you can eat it now. Now here's the thing, if you like the level of sweetness, it's two ounces of unsweetened almond milk and two ounces of unsweetened apple juice. If it's too sweet, use all plant milk or all water. If it's not sweet enough, use all juice. I've used pomegranate juice in there when I had didn't have apple juice. I've used even orange juice. Originally, we usually did have orange juice. What I would do is when, if you, if you are gonna buy juice, you know, again, there's really only the, the three that I recommended, but my suggestion is if you use a lot of apple juice in recipes, get a cheap juicer, you don't have to get a great one, and juice apples, and then what you can do is just put them in ice cube trays and then you freeze them, okay? So then they're frozen, and then you can pop them out anytime you want. You can pop it in a recipe, you can pop it in your water bottle, okay? But we're getting all that packed in, and we're getting all the, a, a good majority of some of the fiber is still in that, if you have a good juicer. One of the, now let me show you the way you're not, you're, the way you're gonna eat it is, oh yeah. That's the recipe in your book. That's the only one that isn't. But it's on, it's on a website. It's on, it's not, it's on um, the Eating Rules website. I mean, it's really easy to find my recipes. Just go Chef AJ overnight muesli. But you sign up for the, this piece of paper that's going around and I'll send the recipe to you. You don't need to grind the chia seeds? No, you don't need to grind chia seeds for some reason. Flax seeds, yes. 
That's it. They're, they're very similar, you know, in nutritional profile. They're, 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 they're close. The, the chia is nice because if you don't have the ability to grind it or if you don't want to make the time, it, that, that's the one to go with. We have 10 minutes left. Good. Okay. So here's how you're going to taste it today. So when I went into this presentation for 400 people, the person serving the samples gave everyone a tiny soup and a scoop. And I went home with probably 200 samples of muesli. And I figured, what am I going to do? Because I, I was going to eat 200 samples of muesli. So what I figured I'd do is I started baking it. And I took a cookie scoop that is the equivalent of a third cup measure. And I baked it on a piece of parchment paper or a silt pad for 30 minutes at 350. And each, each single recipe of muesli made seven cookies. And they were so good. Because wouldn't you rather have seven cookies for breakfast? <laughs> yeah, and they were delicious. But what was even more delicious is the way you're going to taste it. And, it. and it's interesting how there's no such thing as accidents. Because because of this snafu, one of my best recipes was created. I have a dehydrator. I happen to have the Excalibur knife tray. But I'm sure you could do this in a $30 dehydrator from Walmart. So I had all this muesli left. I was baking it like crazy, and I still had muesli coming out my ears. So what I did is I took the mixture that you just saw, or some of you saw being passed around, and I put it on the sheet of the dehydrator. It's called a Teflon sheet, and I spread it thinly. I dehydrated it for 12 hours. I flipped it, removed the Teflon, dehydrated it for 12 hours. And what happened is I got the most delicious granola I've ever eaten. And the sheets come out as big as this. I traveled with them in my suitcase this big, and they didn't even break. Hey, Greg, come here. This is my thing. Everyone, he's a doctor. I gotta tell you a joke. Tell me how it is. Face the audience and tell me what you think. Eat it in front of them. It's not hot, so don't worry. So bring it back to your seat and share it. It's great. Good. You can have the whole thing. Now, so you're, yeah, I'm gonna tell you this, because especially, he's, you, you deliver babies, right? Okay, what's the first thing a Jewish baby girl says the minute she's born? <laughs> so you're a doctor? <laughs> I bet you've heard that as a, as a baby girl. <laughs> Thank you. So you're a doctor? <laughs> if you like that one, I've got a million. All right, in Judaism, it's okay, see, because you're allowed to make fun of your own people. In Judaism, when is a fetus considered a human being? Anybody? The day it graduates medical school! <laughs> of course! Alright. Very good. Very good. As you were. So, that's how you're going to get it. You're going to get it as granola. And see, I'm a person that likes texture. I like to masticate. And for the interpreter, I said masticate, not masturbate. Okay? <laughs> there is a difference. They may look the same to a lip reader, masticate, masturbate. I see it looks exactly the same. I like texture. And so when I developed this recipe, I was thrilled because all granolas out there are basically crap. They usually have agave, they usually have coconut oil, they usually have salt. And you saw what was in this, all clean ingredients. Now, I think a lot of times when I'm working with the geriatric population who isn't very good with masticating and they, they don't have good digestion, I have a tendency, again, to blenderize things more for them. Even their oatmeal, I'll blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it. Especially the nuts, you really have to blend because those will pass right through. So please keep that in mind. My favorite way to eat this granola is with some almond milk, homemade almond milk. Please don't buy food in packages, guys. You know, Jacqueline Lane said 80 years ago, 13 words that if we all lived our life by, we'd never be fat, we'd never be sick. And those words are, if God made it, eat it. If man made it, don't eat it. With all due respect to the vendors out here, food is not supposed to come in cans, bottles, boxes, and bags. It's not. It's supposed to be, as Dr. Hans Deal says, from a, from a plant, not made in a manufacturing plant. If it's a whole food, eat it. If it's not a whole food, just being vegan doesn't mean you're going to be healthy if you're eating junk food, sugar, oil, salt, flour, all that kind of stuff. So I don't buy almond milk in boxes. It has always has salt. Even if you can get one without oil and sugar, it's always got things like carrageenan, vitamin A, you know, oils. The oil is hidden. They call it sunflower lecithin and stuff. It is so much cheaper and easier to make your own almond milk or rice milk or oat milk. The easiest thing is to take one tablespoon of raw unsalted almond butter, put it in a blender with two, three, four cups of water, a date if you want it sweet, 
a little vanilla if you want a vanilla. You don't need, you know, when you have packages, you know, the environment's important too. Stop buying so many foods in packages, especially when you can make it yourself. When you have a glass jar from the almond butter, you're going to reuse that glass jar. I sure do to store soups and things like that. And you know, when you buy those things in boxes, those plant milks are about $1.99 or $2.49 for four servings. When you make it yourself, it's about five cents a serving. And it's so much easier, and it tastes so much better. So my favorite way is to take that granola, soak it in a little bit of the plant milk, and then slice a banana and put some blueberries on top. And it's crunchy, and it's sweet, and it's delicious. And I guess if you guys want to hand out the samples, you can. They've done a great job back there. I don't know how these two just been. Let's think that we is that not only the processed food, but we're going out to eat all the time. So we've lost our connection to actually making food. We've gone from when I worked with seniors 25 years ago, everybody would sit down to a meal. Everyone helped prepare the meal, helped clean up. There was a bonding time there. You were eating slower. You weren't rushed. And it's that connection that we're losing. No child today really is being raised in that type of environment. Most kids don't even know where their food comes from at all. So when I'm working with families, I always want the kids to learn how to sprout. I want them to get a garden. I want every child to get in the kitchen and do something, eat whatever safe at their age. If they can use a knife, great. But just like some of these recipes, they can press some of those different things into the molds and that they, that they have a connection with food. And I'm just going to talk about travel for a minute, then you can ask me any questions in the remaining time. Then we're going to be out there selling book levels. <coughs> His book is awesome. Buy his over mine, seriously. I only have 10 copies left. But let me just tell you, I travel three weeks out of four weeks every month. So what you need to get is a cooler. Now, men, if you don't want to get a ladies looking one, you don't have to. But this was $14 at Target. And what I love about it is it looks like a woman's purse, so when I go to the movies, I can sneak all my food in. <laughs> So for $14 at Target or Bed Bath & Beyond, I got this wonderful cooler. Also at Target or the 99 cent store, I got an ice chip. You can get these for a dollar. TSA allows you to travel with these as long as it's frozen solid. So I'm going on the plane pretty much right after here. So here's what I got from Trader Joe's. Now I'm going to eat this. I have this every day for breakfast. A 10 ounce bag of organic pops. I've got a 10 ounce bag of kale that's already been steamed. This is what I eat for breakfast every day. If you want to know how I lost 55 pounds, it was by not eating nuts and by eating vegetables for breakfast. And exercise. Yeah, well, if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> True story, when AJ, and we met at a conference, and then we reunited back in, in, in LA. And she said, well, you know, I always go I always go to the hiking trails where we can get together. So we made a date to go there, not a date, but you know, meeting. And um, no joke, I get to the hiking trails, and AJ had two blankets spread on the ground with her two dogs lying down. And I said, well, what are you doing? I, I, I thought we were going hiking. She said, oh, no, I don't go hiking. I just go to the hiking trail. <laughs> <laughs> and it's unbelievable. So then I finally kind of got her into exercising, you know, forced her gently. And now she's doing spinning classes, and she's doing yoga. yoga. So she just really helped her a lot. But also, part of it was giving up the nut butter, too. Yeah, yeah. Peanut butter was my downfall. So look what else I got for the plane. I got a sweet potato organic. This weighs over a pound. I got two bananas. So this is, I'll be fine. You know, it's a two-hour flight, so this will be enough, right? <laughs> Imagine when I can fly to New York. I'm not like that. So, you know, people always worry, well, what do I do when I eat out? What do I do when I travel? First, clean up your environment at home. Let's start eating healthy at home first, and yep. then we'll worry about what you got to do when you eat out. So yeah, it's environmental control. You have to control your environment, because if you're stressed, you're depressed, or you're happy, you want to celebrate, and you're going to always try to celebrate with food. But if you open your refrigerator, everything's cut up, and you can see it in the glass containers, you're going to go for what's there. So you have to really, yeah, that's why I have my clients. Every Sunday, they prepare their food for the week, and this way there's no excuses. We're going to be speaking in Indiana on Thursday with Rick Esselstyn and Pam Popper and Dr. Greger, if anybody wants to come. <laughs> yes, not any questions? Yes, you, sir. How much water goes with the one tablespoon of unsweetened almond butter? How thick you want it is up to you. A minimum of two, a maximum of four, three being the average. Cups? Cups, yes. Anybody else? Um, all the way in the back. What do we think about smoothies? Well, most of the smoothies that I use uh, are definitely green smoothies, so they're not just all fruit based. So we put a little bit of fruit in for particular berries because they're so important for brain and they're lower in glycemic index. And then we put a lot of greens in. A lot of um, greens. I mean, that's the operative word in our greens. That's why they're green. green. But for my clients who are overweight, 300 plus pounds or whatever, and they're trying to lose weight, I want them eating their foods. I don't want them drinking them. But for children and senior citizens, 
Smoothies are a must because they're taking a massive amount of food and condensing it. They're able to drink it down. No child is, most child, uh, children are going to eat blueberries and mangoes and kale and some almond milk for breakfast. But if I put that all in a smoothie, I can get the parents to get the child to drink it. Yeah? About three to five days in a glass jar, it will separate and you shake it up. But realize you can make it as you go along. If you're doing a recipe that calls for a cup of almond milk, just do one cup of water and one teaspoon of almond butter because it's so easy to make. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you want to get $45 off the Instant Pot, you go to www.instantpot.com and as you check out, you have to start the checkout process and coupon code will appear. You put in two letters, AJ or JP, and you'll get $45 off. And yeah. what I do, just real quickly, is what I do is I make, I steam my vegetables, and in two or three minutes they're done, then I dump them, right? I put them in a bowl, and then I start it over again. Three minutes, dump them. So I've got everything made for the week. And also, I always drink the water. By the way, you know, people, with all respect to raw food, as they say, well, raw food, you know, it, it destroys all the vitamins and minerals. Well, here's the thing. Where are the vitamins and minerals going? It's going in the water, so I drink the water. And actually, you know, there's certain vitamins and minerals that are more bioavailable when slightly cooked, like the carotenoids and carrots and sweet potatoes, the lutein and greens and the lycopene and tomatoes. So I think you should eat a lot of raw, but I don't think 100% is doable for most people. And you certainly have to eat a lot more food when you eat it raw. I mean, I eat, I eat three pounds of vegetables a day, and if I had to eat all of those raw, I would be like a monkey chewing all day. So I like to cook my vegetables. The other thing is when you have the liquid here, you can also save it in a glass container and use it as a soup yep. base. Use it so raw. use it a base. And you can use it to water your plants, because guess what? Your plants, not while it's hot, by the way. Plants do not like any water when it's hot. <laughs> but once it cools off, you can water your plants with that. Yeah. Um, I heard you're not supposed to eat like two hours before bed, so what do you recommend for like a, a good solid dinner? That Starch. My she said, I hear you're not supposed to eat at least two hours for, before bed. My doctor tells me five hours. My doctor, who's a gastroenterologist, says we should, there should be five hours between, and, and the doctor in the audience is not even You're not even that's correct. You know, our ancestors didn't eat before bed. I mean, you know, they what lights out, when it got dark, we went to bed. So I heard five hours should be a minimum of the last bite of food. Now that said, sometimes I'm working late, and if I'm like starting, I might eat a piece of fruit or something. So uh, the most satiating, okay, if you look at something called the satiety index, SI, the most satiating food is the potato. The white potato has a satiety index of 323. So for me, the most satiating meal is what I eat probably three times a week. My husband would eat it every day. I take a potato. I don't care what kind, Yukon Gold, Russet, Sweet Potato, the bigger the better. Cook it however you like, boiling, baking, I don't care. So a huge potato, stuff it with corn and beans, 50-50, organic if possible. I like pinto, he likes black. So I'm, so I'm eating three kinds of starch, potatoes, corn and beans. I put on salsa, I can buy salt-free salsa at the store or make my own, and a little bit of avocado or guacamole, some jalapenos. It's about a 400 calorie meal, you will be so full. I serve this to regular people. I mean, it's not even a recipe, but it's, it's, it's like a potato bar, and it's delicious. You will not be full. Well, what's interesting is the True North, if anybody wants to hang out with me for 33 days. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be there 11. The True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, where Dr. Alan Goldhammer and Dr. Doug Lyle, who wrote the Pleasure Trap work, it's a beautiful place. You go for $139 a day. It's a fasting center, but in December, we don't fast. We teach you how to cook every day and eat this way. They demonstrated that meal. And what was really interesting, because we kind of diverted from how bad sugar was with this talk, but the food was pretty good, right? I mean, it was sweet. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, did you think you needed to add molasses to it or stevia? You uh, really don't, because, you know, God didn't make mistakes. He put enough sweetness in the fruit. But so they demoed this meal at True North, and it was delicious. I mean, it was about 400 calories, 375, and everybody ate this big potato meal. And we were stuffed. And then the teacher, her name, her name was Lori, she came out with this delicious raw carrot cake. Well, before she did, she said, she gave us all a potato, and she said, how is it? We said, delicious. She goes, is everyone full? They go, yes. She goes, would anybody like another potato? And everybody said, no, we're stuffed. She goes, really, it's OK, because when you eat you know, without the fat and you're eating this kind of food, you can really eat more. Please, would anybody like another potato? And everybody said, no. She brought out this raw carrot cake. She goes, who would like a piece? And every hand in the room went. And she said, I don't understand. A minute ago, you all said you were full. 
So, you know, it's perspective here because, you know, I was just raised to believe that I was like a cow and I had a separate stomach just for dessert. <laughs> so I do believe, like Karen Calabrese, the lovely lady that demonstrated yesterday, said, if I, I don't eat dessert, but if I did, I would eat it first. And it would be one of those kind of desserts that would just basically, you know, fruit and nut based, but it would, you know. The thing to remember is that our program is based on what works. You know, I've been teaching for 25 years and AJ's been teaching for a long time. So we have. I don't get why that's funny. But so you know, we have a lot of experience. We're not just sitting behind a computer quoting research without testing this on clients. I mean, when we when we did our program originally, you know, I took out I actually took out the desserts of the program. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, we used to have chocolate desserts. They were the ones in my book, fruit and nut based, but it was just. But we we yeah. basically you know giving you of what works for people, and we worked with lots of different people. So the information's in our books. And it's also going to be in our new DVD series. So, and you can also check out our websites too. Knock knock, over here. What is your? I, didn't, I know your name, AJ, but I don't know your name. JP, our parents were poor; they couldn't afford whole names. We both got initials. John Pierre. Yeah, John. Yeah, John Pierre. Okay, and that's my that? website. Just JohnPierre.com. What's the name of your book? Oh, it's the Pillars of Health. Okay, how much? Okay, I'd like to buy one of your books. Yeah. All right. I'll be, we'll be both outside signing. We, we don't have a ton of copies left, but you can come. Lady in the order. Can you say a little bit about what you know about cruciferous vegetables? Well, cruciferous vegetables are really good for you. I mean. Yeah, I think the challenge with cruciferous vegetables is, as I said, most people aren't chewing food thoroughly enough, and that's where these anti-cancer compounds get created, actually. So I think one of the most important things is to make sure you're chewing that really well, the cruciferous vegetables, or to blend them very well. Now, people have thyroid issues. They have to make sure they're Sorry. cooking those Sorry. and not eating them raw. But there's some good information in uh, Brenda Davis's books also. And she has her new one that just came out. What is it? It's Becoming, becoming Raw. Becoming vegan. becoming vegan and Becoming Raw is the other one, right? Yeah, those have some good information in there. Is the lady, is she asking a question? Where's the recipes for those? For what? For what you made. Um, to sign up for my email list or buy my book. <laughs> or both. <laughs> yeah. You can do the salt uh, as a substitute that you use. Was it Benson's? Yeah, my favorite salt substitute is Benson's Table Tasty. You get it in Benson's Gourmet Seasoning. It's just basically herbs and lemon peel, but it tastes like salt. Benson's. Benson's, B E N S O N S. Leaning against the wall. What about the side of you know, xylitol is more sugars. You know, I would check Dr. Greger's website, yeah. Nutritional Fat. He recommends erythritol. Yeah, I mean, it's not horrible, but it can, you know, here's the thing. It's not that things are absolutely good or bad. It really depends what your goals are. And most of our work are people with food addicts. And we find that any sweeteners, even dates for some, just perpetuate the desire for the desserts, keep these people stuck in the pleasure trap. So if you're one of these people that can have a moderate amount of sweeter, but again, what are you using the xylitol for? Because if it's to bake unhealthy desserts with white flour, sugar, and oil, then I don't see how it's any healthier. And you'll never get used to what food's supposed to taste yeah. like if you're using always lots of different Every time sugars. you keep stimulating your taste buds with so much fat, so much sugar, and so much salt, even for these ostensibly healthier versions, you're just perpetuating your desire for more of the same. That's why we, the books, we recommend it and understand that all sugar is addictive, all fat is addictive, all salt is addictive. And when you layer and load them, you create a hyperpalatable product, you create a bliss point in your brain, and you just can't stop eating. So really, it just is not that it's good or bad. It just depends what your goals are. When we look at it from a standpoint of nutrient density, these are not high nutrient foods. And sugar is also deadly to um, pets, so be careful. Yeah. I mean, research now shows with the brain scans and MRIs, and I'm humans, I'm not talking about animal research. Dr. Pam Pete just spoke twice at Dr. McDougall last week that the sugar lights up the exact same areas in the brain as cocaine and heroin, except that it's actually more addictive than cocaine or heroin. So, yeah. Do you use coconut flour or almond flour? I don't use any flour. I don't think flour is a food. Um, if I'm going to have to use flour because somebody is demanding a cake from me, I will take blue free oats and grind them into a flour. You know, anytime you process a food, you make it calorie rich and nutrient poor. So, for example, if you take brown rice, like we went to a restaurant last night called Baby, and I ate a ton of brown rice. I probably ate 500 calories of brown rice, which filled my tummy, which holds about a liter of food. But the whole brown rice had water and fiber and vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and antioxidants and micronutrients. But if I take that same brown rice and grind it into brown rice flour to make cake, 
I now need 1,500 calories or three times as much to fill the same space. So again, I'm not big on any kind of flour because I'm not big on bread. Because bread is, bread is not whole food. Have you ever gone in nature and seen a bread tree? <laughs> <laughs> or an olive, olive oil tree? So I like to eat whole food, eat in full. You know, bread is 1,400 calories a pound, and it's just too easy to overeat on. I mean, most people aren't eating their bread so that they can make these gigantic dadwood kale sandwiches. So I'm just not a fan of bread, especially for people with, that are overweight wanting to lose weight or people with food addiction. So, so flour is not a food that's so yeah. Yeah. Time, time for one more question, and that's it. Okay. I want to know. Please, it has to be a good question, because this is the last one. <laughs> if it's a sucky question, everybody's going to be so pissed. <laughs> no pressure, though. No pressure, ma'am. No yeah. OK. I am just now beginning to turn to vegans. Good for you. And I have had some arguments uh, with her okay. on, on certain things. Like what? Um, I've had cancer. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. And so she vows up and down that eating vegetables, <laughs> and I have diabetes, eating vegetables and staying away from meat and doing all of this will reverse my diabetes and help the cancer. Well, hopefully you bet not bet for money so that ma'am on the left you win. I'm gonna let JP take this one. We can't promise it will reverse your cancer, but with your diabetes. Well, I mean I think that's what that's the whole reason that we're here. I mean I think all the speakers are here, they're trying to share their information because following a plant-based diet, that's the, one of the main reasons we're promoting it is to prevent disease and maybe arrest disease that are already there. And in some cases reverse them. So I think that's what every speaker here basically has been talking about. So I don't think there's there's any doubt in that with all the phytochemicals and the nutrients that are in a plant-based diet. And again, we're avoiding the antibiotics, the hormones, the pesticides, and all the things that aggravate the cancer or other diseases in the body. So I think what I would do is get some good books. I think Brenda Davis has some of the best books that have been written ever. And I think that would be a good place and to Dr. start. And Dr. Neil Barnard has both a book and a DVD program on reversing diabetes. Come to True North where I work. People usually get off their insulin within a week. Even people have been on it for 20. True North in Santa Rosa. I've seen diabetics who've been on insulin for 25 years leave True North not diabetic for the McDougal program. Thank you guys so much.